Hi everyone, my name is AJ Carpio and I'm a second year medical student at the University of Aberdeen. Today I'm going to talk to you about my experience of developing an educational escape room as a first year medical student. September 2023. The University of Aberdeen welcomed the largest cohort of incoming medical students in its history. Over 300 year one medical students overcame many challenges to get in, but little did they know they faced one more obstacle. On their very first day, students who had never met each other had to work together to beat Calidus and his minions to stop climate change and escape the room. Now, I know we're all here today at this showcase because we're interested in escape rooms and we'd like to find out more about their role in education. But I can appreciate that some of you might be skeptical about their utility. You might be wondering, do students actually learn anything from escape rooms? How do I go about making an escape room and how long does it take? Do I need any special skills to make an escape room? These are questions that I will answer in my talk today. Let's start with the basics. I'm sure we all know what an escape room is, but for those that don't, it's a fun activity where a group of people are locked in a room and have to work together to solve puzzles to escape. So what you're seeing now on your screen are some of the different types of puzzles that I've used. The top left is a riddle, the top right is a close, which is a fill in, filling in the blanks activity, and the bottom image is a jigsaw. So why did I get into this? Well, last year, I signed up to the Aberdeen Summer Research Scholarship Program and got allocated to two fantastic supervisors, Dr. Sylvia Mazzotta and Dr. Katrina Cunningham. In fact, they were already interested in escape rooms as a learning pedagogy. Dr. Mazzotta already implemented them in her course, and you can see her poster about it to the right. My project aimed to build up on her fantastic work, so over a six-week period, we decided to investigate if escape rooms could be used to teach new concepts in medicine. I'll talk about how I developed the escape room in a little bit, but first, let's have a look at the results. We ran two versions of the escape room. The first was online, and the second was in person during the year one induction day. We use questionnaires to assess student perceptions. So looking at the results of the first iteration of the escape room, as you can see, we made it available online to year two to year five medical students over a two week period. 23 people filled in the post escape room survey. And while the results tended to be positive, the escape room wasn't perfect. There were some critical comments. Thanks to my supervisors, we got an opportunity to run the escape room again during the incoming first year's induction day. So I used the constructive feedback from participants to enhance the escape room. I ran the second iteration of the escape room with the new first years in person. And you can really tell on their faces that they were engaged, that they were really into it, and that they were working as a team. But don't just take my word for it. Here's the results from the post escape room survey. 66 participants filled in the survey and as you can see from this Likert scale, the responses were really positive. The majority of people agreed that they would like to see escape rooms being used in medical education, and also that they could see escape rooms being an effective way of learning new content. I was very pleased that the huge majority of them didn't think it was boring. Take a look at this Likert scale. This shows how familiar students were with various concepts of climate change relating to human health before the escape room. So we've got things like how extreme temperature and air pollution negatively impacts health, how warm temperatures um, increase the risk of adverse drug reactions, and also how the NHS itself contributes to climate change. So this graph here shows the participants' knowledge before doing the escape room. Now take a look at this graph, which shows the students' knowledge of the topics after the escape room. Just look at that massive increase in their familiarity of topics after the escape room compared to before the escape room. So now that I've demonstrated that escape rooms could be used to teach new topics, let's explore how I developed the escape room. So starting off, I had one small problem. I never tried an escape room before. I had to learn from scratch how to make an escape room from the ground up. So I scoured the internet for resources and looked at examples of escape rooms in medical education. I found out that there's an increasing amount of people researching escape rooms in medical education. And it was very interesting to see how each escape room differed from each other. I'll provide a link to my reading notes if you'd like to take a look. 
I think the biggest game changer for me though was the Escape Room in Education Showcase Conference last year. I learned so much about what makes an Escape Room enjoyable, what the fundamental aspects are, the design considerations, what tools to use, and most importantly, the developmental workflow. And I'd like to share with you the workflow that I used in developing my escape room. So I divided my workflow into two phases. The first is the planning phase, and the second is the developmental and execution phase. So I'll just go through each of these one by one. So starting off by picking a topic and establishing the learning outcomes. So with any learning pedagogy, it's very important to establish what you'd like to teach students. I believe escape rooms are a versatile medium, so I think you could teach about anything really. In my case, I needed to pick a medical related topic, but it's quite difficult because medicine is quite a big field. As my project aimed to assess if escape rooms could teach, this topic needed to be something that students would not have much knowledge or experience of. The answer came quite serendipitously to me. From another summer project I was doing, I learned that there is a huge relationship between climate change and healthcare. Did you know that there's harmful greenhouse gases in inhalers? Or that using diuretics is risky in hot temperatures? Did you know that over 60,000 people in Europe died due to heat stroke last year? With all of this in mind, I found my topic, the health effects of climate change. I used PubMed and Ovid to search the literature for information regarding the relationship between climate change and human health. I created these learning outcomes for the students, and I decided to focus my escape room on the cardiovascular and respiratory health effects of climate change. Once you've created learning outcomes, it's a good idea to work on a narrative as it allows you to build immersion in the escape room. I'm by no means a narrative expert, but I would recommend Dr. Fortress's talk last year as it was very comprehensive, and I feel like I wouldn't do any justice to it. But I can at least try. I would recommend trying to link the narrative with the topic you are trying to teach, and making sure that the narrative is logical, so that, you know, there's no loopholes or anything. There has to be a reason that the participants are trapped, and why they need to hurry to beat the timer. Here's some of the prompts that I use while designing my escape room. My learning goal for students was for them to have a greater awareness of how climate change affects health. And I matched the narrative with this by personifying climate change as calidus, which means hot or warm in Latin. Students would learn how to defeat calidus by completing the puzzles. The thing is, calidus is releasing greenhouse gases and air pollutants at a large scale, so students are encouraged to escape quickly. As to why participants are in a room? They fell asleep during a lecture and they dreamt up everything. And the reason why the doors are locked is so that Calidus could prevent participants from stopping himself and his minions. But luckily, someone from the future smuggled in codes in the form of puzzles in the rooms. So, I introduced the narrative in the pre-briefing session, but I also introduced it throughout the escape room, just interspersed in the slides um, using Geniali. At this point, it's a good idea to identify what resources you have available to you. Time is a resource that is very important, yet it is often overlooked. You should consider how much time you have to make the escape room, and also if you have a dedicated time in the academic calendar to run the escape room with students. As I developed the escape room over the summer, I knew that students would not be able to attend the escape room in person, which meant that I was limited to making the escape room online via website. You also have to consider your budget. Do you have money to buy props to, to make physical puzzles? In my case, I had no budget to work with, which meant that I had to use tools that were cheap and easy to use. After experimenting with different tools, I settled on using WordPress alongside various plugins to host the escape room on the website and I also used H5P alongside Gene Yali to create various types of puzzles. The total cost of the whole project? £13.53 for web hosting and to purchase a domain, which I think is pretty good. Location is another important aspect that you need to consider. In my case, we expected over 300 students to show up, 
So we booked three to four rooms and ran multiple sessions to accommodate everyone. So we've identified the resources available to us. Now we need to consider things from a student perspective. First of all, we need to understand who our target audience is so that we can tailor the escape room to them. In my case, most of the participants would be school leavers, but I also recognize that some people may have a previous degree. So with this in mind, I base a teaching material to build up on secondary school knowledge so that everyone would be able to participate. In addition, I also recognize that since it's their first day, people wouldn't necessarily know each other, so I encourage collaboration in the escape room to allow people to get to know each other better. Another consideration I had to make was how people were going to access the escape room. I figured that most people would bring in a laptop or tablet but I also realized that some people might use their phones. This meant that I had to make the website readable on many types of devices. I also needed to consider what to do if students got stuck at any stage of the escape room. We decided to run the escape room in person and we recruited volunteers to go around to help and prompt people. In addition, I also integrated hints that pop up on each page after a few minutes. In addition, I needed to consider how the number of participants would affect the Wi-Fi connection. I anticipated that a few hundred students would slow down the Wi-Fi, so I designed the website to be lightweight and to load as fast as possible. A considerable amount of time went into developing a cache system for the escape room, as well as using Cloudflare to back up the website just in case the web hosting crashed due to the huge amount of users. That brings us to the second phase of our workflow, which is the developmental and execution phase. So we'll start off by developing puzzles and matching them with the learning outcomes. And this is where you have to be creative, as the puzzles should have some element of the material you are trying to teach. Which brings me to the H5P framework. I would really recommend H5P, as it has a wide variety of puzzle types. The main ones I used were jigsaws, fill in the blanks, crosswords, but there's so many others. H5P is also very easy to use, and it is automatically compatible with assistive technologies without even lifting a finger. You don't have to do anything extra. I also use Geniali after each puzzle to provide further context of the learning material, and I also use it as an overarching activity by highlighting specific letters in blue, which will make sense if you watch... Um, if you watch a sped up version of my escape room later on. The website was built on WordPress, which is very easy to use, as it's just drag and drop. There's no coding needed. I used the WordPress plugin, Pastor, as the lock for each room. I randomly generated a password for each room, but I guess you could be creative with your password to make it link with your topic. So after all this, I moved on to developing the aesthetics of the escape room by including pictures, making sure that the fonts are consistent, and including a countdown timer. From there, I did some final checks with the escape room, such as making sure that the passes worked, and that the hints pop up after a certain time. And this next one might be a bit obvious, but making sure that the puzzles actually work, and that people can solve them. I would highly recommend sending your draft escape room to your colleagues, friends, and family, just so that they can see if there's any task that's too easy or potentially too hard, and that way you can fix it. You should make sure that any links that you have brings you to the next bit of your escape room, rather than some random place. You'll also want to test the performance of the website using speed test tools, and I would recommend using PageSpeed Insights by Google. As I said earlier, it's important that the website loads quickly, and I made loads of changes to facilitate this. At this point, the escape room is finished, and it was time to launch it. And as they say, the rest is history. That brings us to the end of this talk. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you found it helpful. I'd like to thank my supervisors, Dr. Sylvia Mazata and Dr. Katrina Cunningham, who are both fantastic supervisors and have supported me really well, and I couldn't have done it without them. I'd also, I've also included a QR code to a sped up video of my escape room. It's three minutes long, and if you want to look at what my escape room is like, feel free to scan it. I've also included my email down below, uh, just in case if you have any questions. And 
yeah, that's all I have to say. Thank you very much for watching again. I hope you have a good day or night, depending on wherever you're watching. And best of luck with your escape room making journey.